So today I'm going to talk a bit about um, different file formats that you can download Spectrum software in and um, all of the various options that are available uh, for each, each type. And the question is, I guess, well, what's the best to use? And it's quite subjective, really. I have my preferences, other people might have theirs. People who come from a, an emulator background or use devices such as the Div MMC, Div ID devices, be very familiar already with the different types. But what we also have with the Next is, is the ability to change how the computer is effectively perceived by whatever software we're loading. And that's necessary because the different flavors of spectrum and the evolution of the spectrum meant that things were added over time and things were changed over time. And you'd find that maybe some programming techniques would do something that will potentially crash a 128k spectrum or a plus two or plus two a or b and that's just because a lot of the time the 48k spectrum was the only spectrum therefore it didn't really matter so much but then as things evolved naturally backwards compatibility can start to suffer and you end up with issues and the the way to be as compatible as possible really is to try and alter how the next looks or the spectrum looks um, by enabling disabling hardware or loading the actual ROMs from a 48k when you're loading a 48k game, loading the toast rack ROM when you're loading a 1 to 8k game and that kind of thing. So the first thing with so-called ROMs, I don't really like that name for them, but um, organization is key because you're going to have possibly many thousands of ROMs and you really want to work with Next ZXOS and the browser because um, the more you have in a folder the long it's gonna, longer it's going to take to draw that that folder and all the files in there. So I have a folder for all of my classic stuff and I have a few subfolders uh, which describe the file format. My go-to format is tap which is tape and then TZX, which is tape again, but um, even even better for authenticity. Um, and then I have my archive, which is where I have a bunch of stuff, but in different formats. And I use that a lot for testing when I find issues with a, a, a game or piece of software and it doesn't work. I'll switch over to the archive and I'll go through and I'll look at different kind of flavors of that game and see if they work. And then I have my pokes folder, which I'll come back to. So TAP is my go-to format, and as I mentioned, that is a effectively kind of a tape image, but it's not 100% representative of the original tape. You can certainly write a TAP to audio, to WAV, or write it back to tape, but it's not going to be the same necessarily as the original tape. From what I recall, the TAP is when you're creating a tap, it's looking at all of the the frequencies coming in and all the ones and zeros that those two frequencies represent and dumping those ones and zeros into a file. So technically, yes, you can create a tape off a tap. Um, but the benefit of the tap is that you can load it instantaneously. Um, and the other tape format, TZX, you can't load instantly. And that is a 100% representative image of a tape with all of the subtle nuances, odd hyperloaders and techniques as well that people used back in the day to try and prevent software piracy and such. So with a TZX, it's an archive format. You can recreate the tape um, exactly as it was back in the day. So it's good for if you have any faulty tapes that don't work, you can take the TZX file and, and use that and, and recreate it. The problem with TZX and to a degree TAP is that you possibly won't find everything you want in those formats. And for me, when that fails, I start to look at the snapshot formats. And the snapshot formats such as Z80 and uh, SNA, for example, 
they are snapshots of the state of the spectrum at the time that snapshot was taken. So if you freeze execution of a game, say for example, you load a game from tape and it fires up and you hold the execution and then you dump the contents of memory to a file. And that's a snapshot. And when you load a snapshot, you're restoring that memory state of the spectrum exactly as it was. And the game or software will then resume from that point in time. And that has benefits. I think it's certainly games and such are more widely available in snapshot format. But there is that reduction in authenticity because you are just snapshotting memory and you will you will bypass all of the loading screens and such because you will start when the game has loaded and you may have missed that by the time you've taken the snapshot. So the other format, as I say, tap is, tap is kind of my go-to because I can load it quickly, I can load it slowly. So just to demonstrate something here, I'm going to go into my tap folder and as you can see, I've arranged this alphabetically and that means I don't have too many files or folders within a folder. It doesn't take NextZXOS too long to, to draw the screen. And then within the A folder, I then break it down even more. So I'm looking for Offie to say Monty, for example. So I'm going to come down here and there is Offie to say Monty. Now, in this case, you can see it's a tap file and it's listed as a 48K stroke 128K tap. Now, I've noticed in some cases when tap files are named thusly, um, it doesn't always seem to contain a 48K and a 128K version. Um, but this particular game does seem to. So just to go into the options, because when we, when we select a tap, we are presented with a screen of options. Um, in a snapshot, we don't get any options. It just loads the state. If it's a 48K snapshot, it will fire it up as a 48K machine and dump that snapshot into memory. And if it's a 128K machine, it will, it will do the same. So if I select tap, there are effectively two, two, two windows here. Um, the mode we're going to be in to load the game, which is the 128K, user zero, 48K mode, Pentagon, etc. And next, which is based on the Spectrum plus three. That's why it says plus three there. Next ZXOS is an evolution of plus three by the amazing Gary Lancaster. Below that, we have the options, and these are parameters that we can tweak um, prior to the loading. So as soon as we select a mode, it loads. So we have to select the options first. And the options available within a tap are, as you can see, we can wait at the loading screen. There is tape loading simulation, which we can switch on and off. And we also have select load play speed, which is currently set to three megahertz. The tape loading simulation is just using the, the tap data to generate the high low frequencies uh, to give you the familiar sounds and, and the border um, flashes, etc. But it's not using that audio to actually load the game. It, it's reading the data from the tap file and then the simulation part is just playing those sounds, but the sounds aren't actually used to load the game. So simulation is a very accurate term. Advanced hardware options is something that you shouldn't normally have to delve into, but you may find the occasional case where a game doesn't like something or other, and you have to granularly switch off some particular feature. I'll just show you that briefly, actually. There's a whole load of options, and you shouldn't get too worried about that uh, for the most part because, you know, it's small usage cases, I'd say. So, I've just come out of that and back into the tap loading screen. So in addition to the tape loading simulation, we also have the ability to load using Pi Audio. Um, now, if you have a Pi, then you can select the option pressing I, and you will see load using Pi Audio is on and what will happen when I press load and for, for example I'm going to load the 48k version it will 
send that tap file across to the Pi. The Pi will receive it and then it will convert the tap file into audio data. The next will start to listen with its ear <laughs> and then it will start to load as it receives that audio data. Slightly more authentic. Um, you know, if you like that kind of uh, oldie worldy loading and you don't mind waiting and going to make a cup of tea or coffee whilst you're doing that, that's fine. I'm not going to do that just now though. So in terms of what mode to load, um, there's obviously a whole range of options there, but I find it best to try and match what you're loading uh, to the mode that you're going to choose. So if it was originally a 48k game, then you should use the 48k mode. And also if it was originally a 1 to 8k game, you should use the 1 to 8k mode. I don't tend to deviate an awful lot, except in the cases of some 1 to 8k games where they don't seem to work. And then I shall fall back on user zero mode. Um, not had to do that too often. I can't quite remember the difference, but I believe it loads 48k basic, but still has all the 1 to 8k hardware available to it, I think. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong anyway in the comments. But yeah, there are, there are certain uses cases, usage cases, and as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, the way that programmers use the spectrum, and sometimes they might not abuse the spectrum, but do some unusual things to achieve an end result, and we can get uh, compatibility issues. So in the case of Ovi to say Monty, if I press 4 now, the game will load and there we go. And you'll hear the uh, classic beeper music, which I'm just going to turn down on my speakers there. Although it's still coming out my other speakers, so. Um, so if I start the game, do you have to wait for the music to finish on this one or something? Yeah, okay, I'm going to choose Kempston and start the game. And there we are, 48k of Vida Sein Monty, and I've not played this since the 80s, so I'm not going to embarrass myself. And as I mentioned in this case, the, um, the tap file says both um, 48k 1 to 8k on it. So if I go in and um, select 1 to 8k mode number 1, this will load the 1 to 8k version. And now you can hear the glorious AY music. I've also got to bear in mind that when things don't behave the way you might expect, there we go, it's always worth sourcing an alternate tap file or whatever kind of file you're using, rather than saying this doesn't work. Um, just because I've noticed inconsistencies with, um, oh dear, <laughs> with uh, different tap files for the same game were some work better than others and it's really just building up a library of things that you know work and if you do have issues obviously and you've tried different flavors then you can always report it as long as you're on you know the latest core etc um, you know there will be the odd problem here or there and the team can look into that so i'm just going to go back to our feed of saying monty now and show the tape loading simulation and there we go it's loading um, as I said earlier though the the audio generated is a simulation it's not using that audio to actually load the game it is just for show um, just to give you that kind of uh, feeling of the 80s and loading via cassette and, and all that so I'm just going to go back into our video saying Monty and show you uh, loading uh, using the simulation more quickly. And this is an option that sits down 
below near where the Pi Audio setting is. The select load play speed also applies to taps loaded via the simulation. So what that effectively does is it changes the clock speed of the next and the higher the clock speed of the next the faster the tap loads so you can set um, through the main menu the speed of the next to 7, 14, 28 etc and the tap will just load um, faster. But you can also just set it here as well using the S key you can cycle to 28 megahertz must remember to press T to switch the loading simulation on and I'm just going to go again with the 48k version pressing 4. Now when you're using the simulation um, you can drive it up to 28 quite readily because it's not it's not doing the same thing as when you're loading um, with Pi Audio. Uh, as I say this is just simulated so it's loading the tap eight times faster and the simulation of the audio is eight times faster but the next isn't listening to that audio and, 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 and loading the game accordingly. So whilst you can go 28 here, um, 28 megahertz in a TZX context um, or loading tap from Pi it's going to cause you issues uh, on quite a lot of titles but well, I'll, I'll come to that when we look at TZX. And there it is, loaded. Wow. So the music there played extremely quickly. And the thing is, the next has been set to 28 megahertz. And the game will be running at 28 megahertz. So what you need to do is set the speed back. And um, we do that by going into the NMI menu. It's probably the, the easiest way. There's another way. There's a... There's a key you can press in conjunction with NMI and it will cycle through clock speeds. But if we press NMI and we can see in the NMI menu the next is running at 28 and if I press left arrow bring it down to three and a half press enter and now we are at the proper three and a half megahertz and the game will work as normal. So finally in the on the tap front I'm going to go through the process of loading the uh, tap file through the Raspberry Pi if you have one installed. And so we're looking at the options at the bottom there and we have load using Pi Audio, which we press I and switch to on. And as with the tap file, we can change the load play speed uh, using the S key to cycle through the different megahertz. And as I also mentioned, the Pi audio loading method will oftentimes fail at 28 um, where you have games that load at slightly high, higher frequencies than normal at 28 um, effectively multiplies the frequency the highs and the lows by eight times so for some titles hyperloaders and such that will be inaudible to the next and um, you will get nothing. So I've switched Pi Audio on and I've set it to 28 just to demonstrate that. I'm going to load the 48k version of Ovidus Saint Monty pressing 4. It's now sending the tap file across to the Pi. The Pi receives that and then starts the tap to WAV conversion, plays the audio back and the next starts to listen. And there you can see, it's not working. And that's because frequency is too high, spectrum can't hear it. So we're going to do that again. But this time, we're going to set the load speed to 14 megahertz. Load using Pi Audio again. Select the 48k mode. Same again, files transferred to the Pi. I'll convert that into WAV and then stream the audio digitally and the next will be listening for it and we'll be able to hear it this time. And there we go.
And it's the same mechanism really for TZX, except TZX you can't load instantly. TZX you have to load kind of the old fashioned way, uh, but you can accelerate it. And um, I'll show that now. I don't actually have Alveda Saint Monty in TZX format at the moment. So I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to go with Star Glider, I think. So I'm going to my TZX folder. I'm going to find Star Glider. And here is the TZX file. And like the uh, tap menu, we have a lot of similar options there. Um, and in terms of the TZX loading, we have the S again to change the speed. And as mentioned, 14 megahertz should be the limit. Most stuff will work with that. And I'm going to run Star Glider in, say, 1 to 8K mode. Okay, so it's transmitting the TZX, and now it's using a TZX to WAV conversion and playing that WAV audio back in digital audio format, which the next is listening to. And this is Star Glider loading at. 14 megahertz, so it's four times faster than it would have been originally. TZX is the most authentic format available. It's an entire reproduction of the tape. It supports all of the various funny loaders, hyper loaders and kind of copy protection loaders, whatever you want to call them, uh, that were available at the time. It allows you to reconstitute any kind of damaged tapes you have because it is that precise. The downside is that you can't load them instantaneously, um, but many people might not see that as a downside. Um, I mean, literally, I don't think this game's got an awful lot of time to run now before it loads. Um, so I think I'll cancel that and I'm going to move on to other things. Um, I want to touch upon Z80 just to kind of demonstrate snapshot formats. Um, so I'm going to go to my archive folder where I have a bunch of um, various file formats. And uh, I think I'm going to try and find Manic Miner. Manic Miner. So we've got a Snap and a Z80. And for all intents and purposes, the Snap and the Z80 are the same. Internally, they're not. The structure is different. Uh, but for the purposes of, of what we're doing, effectively loading a game, you just select the snapshot uh, and it just loads. Um, so... And there we go, it's instantaneous. And you'll see the other file I have. Um, where are we? So I've loaded the snapshot, the SNA, and the Z80, which is another kind of snapshot. And there we go, the game loads uh, instantly. Now, one of the interesting things back in the day was having hardware that could effectively freeze the execution of the computer and allow you to do things um, like snapshots. Um, well, I'm having to, having to concentrate a bit here now. I wanted to get into the NMI functionality a little bit because if you're really bad at something, game-wise, <laughs> yeah, game-wise, um, then you can, you can kind of help yourself out a bit. Uh, the NMI functionality allows you to freeze the execution of the currently running program. And from that, you can actually take your own snapshot. Which means that you could, if you manage to beat a particularly different level of, a particularly difficult level of Manic Miner, you could take a snapshot at that point and you can then resume from that snapshot. So the yellow button on the side, as soon as this level launches, 
I press the yellow button and this is the NMI menu. Now snapshots only work with classic Spectrum titles, your uh, 48k, 128k games. It won't work on next games because the next is doing far too much. There's far too much state within the machine to capture everything that it's doing. I don't know if it'll ever be possible to do it, to be honest. So for now anyway, just think of snapshots as 48k, 128k type affairs. Now, I've halted Manic Miner. I've pressed the NMI button to do so. And I come down here to snapshot 48128. And it's bringing me back into the file browser. And at the bottom, it's giving me some information there. I press space here if I want to create a new snapshot. And I'm going to give it a reasonable name, I think. Manic Miner. Oh, I could type. Jeez, it's because you're all watching me. Um, level 2, for example. I think you have to put SNA in there, but I'll put SNA in there. So that's now saving the snapshot. Okay, I'll press enter to return, and then I can kind of walk into this penguin like an idiot. And whatever, I'll just, I'm just going to kill myself now and let uh, Matthew Smith's foot crush me. Cool dude that he is. Right. So we've died and we're like, oh shit, I didn't get to Eugene's lair or anything there. So so if I reboot and uh, at the very end of my uh, folder here is the snapshot. Uh, it's at the end because it's, it's the last file. It's not sorted alphabetically because I don't believe there's enough horsepower potentially within the next to sort these massive, what what could be potentially massive lists of files. So if I load that, it's going to take me to exactly where I left off. So in that way, I don't, oh shit, <laughs> I don't think it's, it's not really cheating as such. I mean, it's, you know, we've all lived through this time, the 80s, and we've all had our frustrations with the various games. And I see it as a kind of a nice thing. Uh, to be able to do, uh, to allow you to actually maybe complete some things that you used to play as a kid or what have you. Other functions within the NMI menu, well, pokes I mentioned. Uh, I had a pokes folder, so what's that all about? Well, again, um, with this NMI menu, um, if you download poke files, which are .poc, and you can go and search around for those on the internet, um, just do a search for POC file spectrum or, or something like that, and you'll find archives of POCs. I'm assuming... Sorry, hold on. What did I do? I'm assuming that there is a POC in my POCs folder for Manic Miner, because I haven't actually checked. Let me just come out and up a level. Uh, where am I going? Sorry. I was just getting my keys mixed up there. Because it's actually edit to go right up, uh, edit to go up a level, and I was pressing break by mistake because I wasn't looking at the keyboard. So, back in the classic, we have pokes, and I'm just going to look to see if there's anything for manic miner. Oh, there we go, manic miner dot poc. So I press enter and load that. Do I want infinite lives? Apply Y. Turn off infinite lives poke. That sounds a bit odd. Turns off infinite lives. But I've not used this one before. No. Get the bug by air supply. Poof. I assume that means infinite. You can breathe again now. I don't really know. Yeah. So each poke is different. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to make changes to the... Uh, just kind of asking infinite lives again. Infinite oxygen. No. No. There's so many options here. It's... And the mystery poke in there, I don't want that, no tar. Each, each one's different, and you could looks like you could spend bloody ages on this. Um, let's just see what I've done there. So my air's no longer running out. I've got one, <laughs> one willy at the bottom there. Let's see. Um, okay, so that poke didn't quite have the desired effect, but there were so many... Uh, different options there. I probably should have just pressed Y to most of them. But you can see the 
air's not running out. Um, and so each each poke file will let you do different things. And that's a, that's another good feature because, you know, some of us are getting on a bit now and we don't have the same amount of time to expend on things anymore. The other useful thing I find is settings. And uh, this is where you can set things like joysticks to different interface types. Um, if you have, well, if you've already loaded a game up, for example, and you've forgotten, now, oh, damn, I needed to set the joysticks on the next to something or other, like uh, Sinclair or Cursor or Kempston or what have you. So you don't have to reboot the next to, um, to change joystick selection type. You can just go in here and, uh, oops, and press enter to cycle through um, the various joystick types there, and that will take effect immediately. The other thing you can add is scan lines, uh, which I'm not a big fan of, but a lot of people with uh, LCD seem to like the odd bit of scan line. That's a bit hefty, I think. You can change it to 75, 50, and 25%. You can change the frequency from 50 hertz. You can change the timings. So it's a 48K machine, a next machine, a Pentagon, whatever. Um, and there's a bunch of other options in here, but I find it most useful um, for... What do I find it most useful for? Joysticks and um, speed as well. If you press the left and right arrows, um, you can adjust the speed of the machine. This is particularly useful coming back to the loading side of things because when I demonstrated the Raspberry Pi loading of a, of a game before, I'd actually had to speed up the next in order to load the game at a higher frequency and one of the side effects of that is that once the game actually loads your machine is still running at um, the higher megahertz and you need to slow the game back down again manually because the the code that that drives the next up to 7 or 14 megahertz and and sets the uh, the tzx file loading doesn't have control of the spectrum when the game actually loads so you have to manually um, do that. So I could probably just demonstrate here uh, if I can find a smallish game. And I was thinking maybe Death Chase because that is a 16K game. I'm just not sure whether it's going to be called 3D Death Chase or Death Chase. Um, do, 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 do. It's not there, so it might be Death Chase. Let's try uh, edit to go up uh, a level. Let's try death. Uh, is it death chase all one word? These are all the things when you're trying to find stuff. Death chase, there we go, there's death chase. Actually, I'm talking rubbish here because I, I need the TZX, don't I? I don't want the... Uh, can't do different loading speeds with tap. I should remember that, really. Okay, TZX. Sorry for being an idiot there. And hopefully in the TZX it's called Death Chase and not 3D Death Chase or something. Um, death, death, death. It says Death Space Chase. Okay. Select that. I'm going to select 14 megahertz and then I'm going to load it in 48k mode with a 4. So when this loads, it's going to start at um, 14. And this doesn't look like the death chase I remember. <laughs> so if I've loaded something completely different, then it's just an example anyway. Oh, it is. I don't remember that loading screen. I remember kind of a cool motorbike graphic. Um, maybe someone can point out in the comments. But as soon as I launch this, it's going to be crazy. As you can see, it's just, yeah. I can't even remember the keys because I didn't select, I don't think I, oh, I did, ooh, yeah. So that is like, we're talking Return of the Jedi craziness here. So, so when you load a game, um, 
in that in that way. You there's a there's a keyboard shortcut you can use holding down the NMI and pressing a key to cycle through megahertz, but I find it easier just to press the NMI. You can go into settings. Actually, you don't have to go into settings, do you? It's on the main NMI menu. Hold on, let me just do that properly. So you're on the NMI menu, and it's on 14. You drop it down to 3.5, and, and then we now have the proper 3.5 megahertz speed. So that's just something to bear in mind if you've got a Pi, and if you want to load games extremely quickly. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's about it, I think. Um, just bear in mind when you're loading games, try and match the game to the machine type. I think that it already it ran on originally. Um, you'll have more success there. I know I've not really explained too well why we have to have so many options. Uh, it is just because of the distinctness of each spectrum model and the way that uh, software writers are can be quite specific at times and, and using functionality, which is not uh is it, or is frowned upon from uh later spectrum models so yeah i think that's about it so cheers for listening and uh see you later